25. And it says this. Now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the slack book, the the declaimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God? that shall deliver you out of my hands, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of that, thy hands, O king. But if not, uh -huh. now remember, everybody say, but if not. But if not. not. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve their gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and form of his vintage and was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times hotter, more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind. Everybody say, to bind. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And to cast them into the burning fire furnace. Then these men was bound. Ever say, everybody say, bound. 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 In their clothes. In their clothes. Their hoses. In their, their hats. And their, their other garments. And were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot. The flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound. Everybody said they were bound. 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 Into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men? Bound into the midst of the fire. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. Everybody say loose. loose. Walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Yes, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Lord Jesus. We ask for your anointing, O God. Oh, great God, we know your word is anointed. Yes. That the words that come from between yes, the lips Jesus. speak the oracles of God, that they might destroy the yoke of bondage that's upon your people. And we ask it right now, and everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Jesus' name. You may be seated. For just a little short while. I'd like to preach to you, bound by doubt, set free by love. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory. Bound by doubt, set free by love. We are full of doubt at all times and full of faith in others. Have you ever doubted that God would do it for you? Have you ever doubted that He would would do what you ask. There's no doubt in my mind tonight that everybody that sits under the sound of my voice has doubted one time or another that God would not do whatever they ask. Or Brother Stephen said it so lovely tonight. I wonder, have you ever wondered what it's going to be like to run down streets of gold?
You know why we would want her then? Grace fall. Because we've been there yet. And we wonder whether we're going to make it or not. Has anybody in here ever said, oh, I'm not so, I'm not sure I would make it if the rapture happened tomorrow? Have you? Anybody in here with thought those thoughts? Yes, it is. thoughts of doubt. Come on. Yes, it is. Has anybody ever in here ever wondered, am I really saved? Yes. Did I speak in tongues or did I just jammer? Come on. Come on. That's doubt. We're bound by doubt. We've been put in, in, in bondage by doubt. Tonight, as I speak to you, there are people in this congregation that has not received a healing on account of doubt. I don't know if God can do it. I thought, Brother Stephen, when my foot was hurt me so bad, and Sister Natalie will just say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I kept thinking, I've been doing it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I kept thinking it worked for you, woman, but it ain't working for me. <laughs> Staff, come on. When you hurting so bad that you literally can't walk, you begin to think about a lot of things. Oh Lord, if I get to where I can't walk, how am I going to go to the bathroom? <clears throat> hey, these things come to your mind. Lord, if I can't walk, how am I going to make it to church? Lord, if I can't walk, how am I going to get in my truck? Lord, if I can't walk, how am I going to do this or how am I going to do that? Because we have a doubtful mind sometimes. Ephesians 3, 18 through 21 says this. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height thereof. I don't say thereof. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him that is able to exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, are you bound or are you free? Abraham. There's many in the Testaments that doubted God. Abraham said, Will a son be born to a man of a hundred years old? God promised him that son, Brother Stephen, long before that. But over time, he did not receive that son, so he began in it began to doubt. Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? Verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord to do? That's what the angel asked. What is wrong with us and our doubting mind? Is there anything? too hard for God to do. I say to you tonight that we need to step up and say I'm not going to doubt anymore. Come on. I can do whatever I ask you to do. When you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Come on. Oh, glory, church. Every promise in the book is mine. Every promise in the book belongs to you. Praise God. Joseph was rebuked by Jacob, his father, who was a a, a, a father of a country also. Praise God, he took over Abraham in his place because he died. He literally rebuked his own son. What is this you say? I didn't write down exactly what he said. But he said, you say that mother and daddy's going to have to bow down to you too, Joseph. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years on account of doubt. 
Praise the Lord. They doubted not one time, but time and time again. They they needed water and, and, and they got they had none and, and they what are we gonna do? Die thirst. They got to the Red Sea and they told Moses, if you let us out here to be captured and slaughtered by Pharaoh again. They got out there when they didn't have nothing to eat and they said we should have stayed in, in Egypt where we had plenty to eat. Doubt. Doubt. Bound by doubt but set free by love. Gideon fleeced God before because of doubt. God called Gideon and said you can do it. And Gideon said I got to have proof. I got to have proof. I can't believe what you're speaking in my ear. What's the matter we can't believe when he said, whatsoever you ask in my name, I shall do. Oh, yeah. Praise God, I ain't got to lay out a place no more. Oh, Praise God. God, because I know what the Word said. Yeah. Brother Stephen, I've been set free by the yeah. love of God. Yeah. I have been set free by His love. Praise the Lord. And after all these... We take a look at the most doubting of all who was doubting Thomas. Who said, unless I see the nail marks in his hand, then I put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not be lit. Praise the Lord. That's why Jesus made this statement. He said, more blessed are you who have not, not seen than them that have seen and believed. Praise God. I want you to know something. I didn't walk hand in hand with him, but I read it in a word. And some pricked my heart and said, this is true. Yes. Yes. And I begin to believe. When I think of God so loved the world, John Michael, then he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him yes. shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I thought to myself, it's easy. Seemingly, people in the United States have been taught from babies almost that Jesus was born and that Jesus died and was crucified for our sins. There's very few people in the United States that out there. There is some atheists. But I don't care what religion they are, they believe what I just said. But there's doubt in their mind on the day of Pentecost Come on. when they begin to hear them speak in another tongue. Come on. They tried to confuse everybody. They tried to put it off as this or that or the other. Because it was bound by doubt. Something they didn't understand. I don't understand them speaking in an unknown tongue. Some people read them scriptures. I had a good Baptist lady. Good lady. Nice lady. Came here one time and she began to tell me, oh, but you got that scripture wrong. She says, go back and read it. I said, hold on just a minute. I went and got my Bible and began to read it. And he said there was every tongue out of every nation. He said, see there, said they was all different nationalities speaking different things. I read on this in just a minute, sister. Just a few verses there. It says, it's not all these Galileans yes. that we see speak in our own tongues. Come on. But people have a tendency to be bound with doubt, brother John Michael. And it's not just in the Old Testament. I'll give you some of the new in a minute. But I'm telling you tonight that when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you will set free. Jesus said, who I make free shall be free indeed. Praise God. I want you to know something tonight. When you receive that power of the Holy Ghost, God made you free. You're no more bound by anything. The devil cannot handcuff us to the fence post and keep us there unless we allow him to. All right. He can tell you a lie. You have the choice to either believe it or not.
John 8 and 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See, when you begin to read or hear the truth, it's found, praise God, with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, you begin to believe. That's why Sister Haney received the Holy Ghost that night. She had said it. That's why Sister Jamie received the Holy Ghost last Sunday. Because she had said in a service and heard preachers preach about the Holy Ghost speaking in my long tongue and how we needed that besides baptism to be saved. And the Word began to make them free. Yeah. See, it wasn't on the net appeal. It's the Word that yeah. begins to make them free. Yeah. I looked and I seen uh, Sister Cheney sitting out there and, and I felt like the Lord said, I'm fixing to set her free. <coughs> and the Lord began to speak into my ear and instruct me what to do. Sometimes we would be real well off yeah. if we just shut up and listen for God to instruct us on what He wants us to do. John 10 and 10 says this, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. We can take that one scripture and all we have to do to judge what's going on in our mind. Is he stealing? Is he killing? Is he destroying? He wants to steal the word. He wants to kill the Word. And He wants to destroy the Word. Because the Word has set you free. Yes. The Bible says God is love. And love has set you free. Yes. Acts 12, 6-7 And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Bound. Can I say bound? Bound. With two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chain fell off his hand. Come on. I want you to know God saw old Peter laying there asleep in that jail cell. And, he, and I know, I believe I know about what God was thinking. Brother Stephen, I believe God was saying, now here's a man. He denied me three times. But when he got the right idea, he done what I commanded him to do. And he has been bold. He has preached. He has healed. He has seen people saved. He has delivered. And now he sits in a jailhouse. I say he didn't have any doubt. The Bible says he was asleep. Hard to sleep if you doubt, did he? Praise the Lord. See, he done been set free. He done his doubt before the cop broke. I don't know him. I've not been with that man. I don't know who he is. Then in the jailhouse, Peter wasn't worried. They may have told him they was going to kill him the next morning. I do not know, but Peter wasn't worried. That's right. His doubting days was over because guess what? He'd been set free by love. That same God that so loved the world, he looked in front of Peter and said, You might have denied me three times, but I love you. I love you. I love you and I'm going to set you free. I'm going to set you free from bonds and stop. I'm going to set you free from being bound by the devil himself. Tonight, God wants to set you free. Yeah. God wants to pour out his love and tell you you can quit worrying. How many of you in here worry? Come on. I know ain't nobody can raise a hand now. But there ain't too many here. Don't worry all the time about what's going to happen That's tomorrow. Right. Come on. Come on. My wife just come, come on Medicare and 
course, she's got a lot of medicine, but her co-payment went from about $80 to $200-something dollars. And I heard her over and over, over and over. I said, you, she said, I ain't going to get that medicine. I said, you got the heavy medicine. We're going to get the medicine. Well, it ain't fair. I said, I didn't say it was fair. But we're going to get the medicine. We got the medicine. But I'm telling you right now, the devil tries to tell some of you elderly people in here, you don't get enough money to live off of. Wake up, you're still living. Yeah, amen. Wake up, you're still living. I don't care how little retirement you get. Come on. You're still living. Come on. You're going to wake up in the morning alive. You're going to wake up in the morning, God's going to do something else for you. And you're going to wake up the next morning, God's going to do something else for you. And the more or the less you doubt, the more God will do. Yes. Come on. Acts 16, 25 and 26 says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prison. Prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. They were sitting there, Brother Stephen. They were bound and stopped in chains and feathers, I believe it said. And all of a sudden, God said, I love them so much. I'm going to cause an earthquake. And it's going to shake the jailhouse. Praise God to the shake the chain and the stocks off of them. I'm going to set them free because I love them so much. Come on. I was wondering as I prepared this, how much do we miss out on? Come on. Because of our doubt. How much do we miss out on? There's a scripture in the Bible. I'm not for sure if I get it all right. It says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Talks about him wavering. And, and if he asks anything, he won't receive it. You can't stand up one minute and say, I got faith, and, and lay down the next minute and say, I don't know if he'll do it or not. We got to run with the faith. We got to know that faith is the evidence of things hoped for. I mean, the. Uh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My mind went away. Thanks, Lord. Things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. I can't see it, God, but I know it's going to happen. I can't see the new building only by picture, God, but I know it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to come up. It's going to be a metal building. It's going to look like you said it was going to look, Lord. It's going to be what you want it to be, yes, God. We're going to worship you more than if we did in this one. Come on, church. Yes, you need yes, to yes. You worship all. You need to say that.
And did they ever play a spiritual yes, music? Yes, right. I want you to know something. One got filled with the Holy Ghost yes. and praised God because there was no doubt in this building. Others got relieved for some yes, things that they were bound up. Yes. But I'm here to tell you tonight, tonight ain't no different. I don't oh. care if Sister Melissa's here or she's not. You can be set free by love. Yes. Yes. Amen. He said, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes. Yes. Have you been set free? Praise God. Paul said, Ephesians 3, 20, Now to him that is able to exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. We're set free. Anything that we ask, he can do it exceedingly abundantly. Beyond what we can think. Yes. Oh, glory. But here's a catch according to the power of that work within us. The power doesn't doubt. The power's not bound up. The power doesn't tell us that you can't do this or you can't. Have you ever had a, something that you want to quit doing? Anybody ever, he in here ever cussed a little bit after he got some of the girls want to get rid of them? Come on. Sister Rob, a few more. Did you get rid of it? Yeah. Brother Nineveh was telling you this morning that you don't have to live with it. You don't have to be bound by things. It was a habit formed on you before you received God. Right. All you got to do is begin to seek His faith. Yeah. All you got to do is start stepping yeah. out of faith and say, God, I'm going to get the limits tonight over anything and everything I need. Yeah. Scripture says, if you abide in me, and my word abides in you, yes. you should ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Yes. Mm. We have been set free. Amen. Stand to your feet. I'm not going to be long tonight. <coughs> Praise God, but I want you to listen one more time. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, ye shall ask what ye will. He didn't say you had to ask according to the Scripture. He said, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. We have been set free, church. We have been set free. And tonight, by the love of God that dwells in this old preacher, praise God, I'm going to tell you all you have to do is crawl down on your knee and say, God, I got faith when I get up tomorrow or when I leave this building. Everything within me is going to be changed. Everything's going to be new. I'm going to walk out of here hand in hand with my Savior. And things is going to change in my life. And you know what? The next thing's going to start happening. If you do this, <coughs> your children's going to quit saying, Mom and Daddy fuss too much at home for me to go to that old church. Daddy's still lying for me 